Okay, hello, this is Gerd Leonhard, futurist uh, in Sydney. I live in Switzerland, but I'm in Sydney now. Here with Ross Dawson, fellow futurist and, and uh, pur purveyor of wisdoms. Um, today we're going to talk about, or now we're going to talk about the future of television. Um, it's a small, a small topic, I guess, and, and uh, pass it over to Ross first, and what's your take on that? Uh, uh, there's lots of lots of nice juicy bits about the future of television. One one is this idea of video everywhere. So I don't think it's that long before we have video wallpaper. Basically, you take your paintbrush and you paint your wall, and you've got the whole thing as video. And so that's all tabletops or floors or ceilings or uh, your glasses and so on. So that's that means that there's lots of spaces to create to put all of this extraordinary amount of uh, video that we're creating. Another another thing which is I'm particularly interested is this idea of participatory TV, where it's, you know, it's, it's part of the whole shift of media has been from this hub and spoke as in broadcast, we're in the middle, you're out there, you know, watching whatever it is we have to purvey, to creating something which is co-created, where people are actually participating in that. And there's a, a, you know, a few interesting things happening in that space at the moment, which are pushing out the boundaries just a little bit. There's uh, what's trending from CBS, which includes some some interactive elements. There's Al Jazeera's The Stream, which uh, is a kind of like a social media view of the, the news uh, uh, source. And there's a couple of others. So we're, we're beginning to get into participatory TV, but it's it's pretty early on. Yeah, I think in many ways we may have to get rid of the word television, right? Because because the <laughs> yes. way with, I mean, if you're, we're, we're both in the same age, so if you're thinking of television, you're thinking of a central entity providing yeah, it. Yeah. You're thinking of a box where it's inside of. You're thinking of a cable in the ground or a satellite. Yeah, yeah. None of that is true anymore. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it's still true, but there's now lots of other things that I think over the top television is 90% of Chinese people are, if they are online, they're watching online video instead of television or along with television, right? So the, the very definition of video is completely upside down. Uh, of course, there's not just YouTube, there's another 50 like YouTube. And then there's uh, TED.com and Fora TV and Big Think. And so this on-demand role of television, both on production as well as on consumption, yeah. is just exploding. Right? So if we think of a, a larger story, it's also converting, uh, converging with text and with audio. So New York yeah. Times now has video channels. Uh, and uh, I mean, the other day, I think Jeff Jarvis said it's, it's basically books that you can watch and television that you can read. Right? So it's now yeah. basically, it's completely converging and every television in the world will be connected to the internet. Yes, absolutely. So, I mean, part of it is this video is a better word than TV. Uh, moving images is sort of even a better catch-all, but it's kind of getting a bit clunky. So mm. Maybe you can call it MI. <laughs> but the um, but this whole thing of IPTV is, is it's kind of, it's well, it's been inevitable from the start, is the, the fact that, yes, broadcast towers exist, and they are great at getting out television signals to a lot of people, but given we have a whole lot of new infrastructure, there's no question that the existing channels will also be getting out over IP before we knock down the towers. And they will have, you know, providing the, the space for tens, hundreds, thousands, millions of channels where, uh, and that's the, this, what you call it IPTV or call it what you like. This is this, you know, the infinite channel world. Well, if you're looking at 20 years from now, you know, we probably don't need the proprietary infrastructure of of uh, cables in the ground or yeah. just for certain kind of uh, television programs. So this can all go over the web or electronic networks. And, and right now that doesn't work because if we're going to broadcast over 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 the internet now, if there's 100,000 people listening, it's, it's game over, right? Uh, because it doesn't have enough juice, right? But 20 years from now, that's all going to converge and come together. So from my point of view, I think the future of television looks great because everything is a screen. Yes. Right? And that's a huge opportunity. I mean, everything, newspapers are screens now, right? I mean, you, you actually have magazines that have screens embedded. Yes, right? yes. So because there's a screen everywhere, that means everybody wants to see video. And now, for example, education is all available online. This is a huge opportunity for educational TV yes. and, and shows and, and all this kind of stuff. So uh, it kind of blurs the border between content groups, you know. Yep. Like, for example, games are now actually television as well. Yes, yes. Uh, and and you, can, you can even play poker on, on, uh, on digital television now, which essentially is just a, a game. So I think it's also interesting to see that, to a pretty fair degree, the television channels and stations are taking us having a similar mindset and approach to the newspaper organizations have. 
which is not recognizing what you've seen as these blurring boundaries, but being able to say that newspapers and newspapers, and yes, we'll set up some websites as well, and television channels as well. The, def the defensiveness, I think, in a lot of TV uh, uh, companies is, is you know, doing them a disservice because the reality is video is going to be at the heart of this new world and who better to be able to take that opportunity than those who have already been doing it for a long time yet uh, I don't see this willingness to, to move away from the existing channel to a far broader view of what video is and and how value can be extracted from that. Well, it's about the advertising money, right? Because basically, on a yeah. global level, $650 billion are spent on advertising is to reach us to buy stuff, right? Yeah. And then the rest of it is data mining, marketing, public relations, and all the other hype building. Yes. That's a trillion dollars, right? So there's a trillion dollars on the table, and television guys are saying, oh, wait a minute, we used to get 600 billion of that a year, right? And now these web guys are coming along and, and taking the taking the sausage off the plate here, right? So, so basically what has to happen is that they, they have to realize that advertisers are not going to keep on putting money into the dumb television box that doesn't know who you are. Because as, as the saying goes in the advertising, 50% has always been wasted. Right? <laughs> you just didn't know which one. Now you know which one. Though that, right? that again is one of the opportunities is the targeted advertising. And that's again moving away where you can't, well, there are ways of doing it actually um, over traditional broadcast channels, integrating internet connection to be able to bring in some yeah. targeted advertising, yeah. this, which goes to this broader issue of the future of, of personal advertising and the regulatory and social issues that will allow that. But so, you know, the vast majority of people don't want to watch the vast majority of uh, ads on television, yet that could be very different. We don't all need to go to the soap opera as in branded content being right. everything. We can actually move to there being some kind of brands going out in ways that people, uh, which are going to the right people, which are providing information which they want. But this does require a different infrastructure and it absolutely requires a different mindset from those who are selling and placing that advertising. It goes with the issue of fragmentation, right? I mean, uh, in the 60s and 70s, 75 percent of Americans are watching uh, I Love Lucy or Gunsmoke or, or Dallas. So you could hit everyone with the same ad for the next car and everybody would know it, right? Today, if four and a half or five percent of Americans are watching American Idol, it's a completely fragmented audience. Ten years from now, you'll be happy to get a, a one percent of the entire population of a country to watch the same TV show. Yes. Right? Because we're going like this, right? We're completely yep. fragmenting. And because of that, television is going to go into niche channels, advertising is going to follow, it's all going to be targeted, uh, advertising are going to be very creative stuff to find us. Right? Yes. And this will completely change the landscape of television uh, as far as we know it. As I, as I was saying earlier, let's get rid of that word, find a new word, because um, basically the direction that we're going is, is opening up a lot. So those are a few thoughts uh, on the future of television. For uh, more from me, go to rossdawson.com or search for Ross Dawson. There's uh, chapters from all of my books and uh, lots of reports and articles on my blog. And for good, I actually have my own TV station. It's goodtube.com. That's a YouTube channel. You can go there and watch my stuff. About 200 hours will ruin your summer vacation. Otherwise, go to mediafuturist.com uh, and uh, look at my stuff there. Thanks very much for tuning in.